Corrupt cops often think their badge gives them unchecked power, but time and time again, ordinary citizens have shown them that's not the case. Today we'll be going through these cases where corrupt cops were humbled by the very people they thought they could oppress. I'm here for your protection. Why? Because these people are criminals and will you over the first chance they get. Yeah, go ahead and smile and kiss them until it happens to you. I'm a 30 year veteran and I got pulled over and yanked out of my car because I refused to ID because it was an illegal stop. Yeah. Look at just just Google Connecticut State Police and how much shit they're in. How much shit ma'am, what's your badge number and name, please? Thank you for your professionalism. Where's the other? Good for you. The female officer identified herself and didn't seem too angry. However, another officer was sitting inside the police cruiser and things were about to take a turn for the worse as Samuel went over to record him. Yeah, thank you for yours. How many combat tours? Two. Uh, two too many. Where's the other pig that won't identify? He refused to identify. You might want to bring that up with a commander. It's part of your policy. I know you know, but he said it's not. So he's not only a pig, he's a liar. Fucking piece of shit. Wait, your dog gonna protect you? Fucking scumbag. Get away. No, Back dude, up. don't touch me. Back up. Do Turn not up touch me. Head. Turn up with your head like dude, that. Why? Turn around. Why? Why? Officer Sulik came out swinging at the auditor and knocked him down, along with his camera. Samuel's head struck the pavement, causing him to bleed and suffer injuries in the process. Oh, oh, oh my god! Behind your back! Oh my god! Hand behind your back! All right, dude! Hand you behind just, your back! All right, dude! Hand behind your back! Now. I'm trying to. You just up my head. God, I got. Wait, I got him. I got a rule. I'm ruined from the vet. Oh, my shoulders off death from the war. Please. Hands in front of you. Hands oh in front God. of you. I can't see. I can't see. Other hand. Sure. Dude, I just asked a question. No, you what did. your you name was. My car and I told you to back up. But I can go up to your car. No, you can't. I can. I can. This is gonna be a big lawsuit. Okay. Okay. Samuel kept shouting for help, but the officers didn't respond. Moreover, the female officer didn't intervene to de-escalate the situation, allowing Officer Sulik to keep making matters tough for him. You just f***ed up, my friend. Okay. Your qualified immunity yep. is gone. Okay. I'm gonna get... I need medical help. I request a yeah, super... I request a supervisor. Right <laughs> I got your ID. Yeah. <laughs> Please record this! Your phone is still recording. I request a supervisor. Negative, just name it. I request a supervisor. Do not, I do not consent to searches or seizures. Well, you're under arrest. Well, for what? Then read me my rights. I'm not asking you questions. Samuel was arrested without any reason, and he was made to sit there with his head bleeding for 10 minutes before the EMS arrived. The female officer handed him his phone back, but didn't have the courage to release him from the handcuff. Can you hand me my phone, please? Thank you. <laughs> What's the crime I committed? I, I think, uh, obstruction's a physical, not, not, not verbal. I can do that! I can't. I can go and take pictures inside it. But I don't know what you're doing. But I don't know what you're doing. I, he could have said, excuse me, sir, back up. And I would have, I was still four feet away. Oh, my God. I could have been. Off. Really? Is that what you're going to use? Oh, no. I have, Oh, is that how we're going to play this? Is that how we're going to do this? The officer safety? Officer, officer. Yeah, but you're a police officer, not me. Because I'm, <laughs> why am I yelling at you? Because I'm aggravated. I defended the Constitution for 26 years and get treated like this by some Nazi mother. 
The veteran was absolutely pissed at the officers, and even though the female officer did initially appear to be calm and composed, she kept defending the action of the tyrant. I didn't hit the ground, I got plowed into the ground by the pig. In my own town, taking pictures of the police is illegal, I guess. All right, sir, so we're, we're separate from them, okay? Yeah, I know. Oh, dude, you're my boys. All right, we're here to treat you. We don't want to have any trouble, okay? Is a supervisor on the way? So we can deliver, so we can, so we can so, so he's not coming out? For him, no. Can I get a supervisor on site, please? Hey, boss. What's your name? What's your name? Kevin. Okay, I'm Colby. Where's my wallet? I want it back. You had no right to take it. You haven't arrested me. You got me in custody. You haven't read me my Miranda rights or told me what I'm being arrested for. I want that information now or I want my wallet back. God, this dude is just a idiot. After getting treatment, Mr. Garrison was charged with two counts of interfering. However, the veteran never obstructed the cops or posed any threat to them. Soon after this incident, he planned to file a civil rights lawsuit against the officer in the city. He started a GoFundMe campaign, which has successfully raised almost $8,000. Very soon, he will be suing the cop and hopefully get the justice he deserves. We hope this tyrant learns his lesson, but this next auditor took these ignorant officials to the cleaners on the spot. You have no legitimate purpose to be here. You need to exit this space. You may stand outside. In August 2023, First Amendment Auditor Jean Paul Reyes decided to conduct a First Amendment audit at the New York State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision. However, just as he made his way in, he was met with resistance from a parole officer. This is the parole lobby here. Yes, ma'am. I don't need any help at the moment. I don't need any help at the moment, ma'am. Okay, you cannot be here if you're not here to see anyone on the parole. There's a sign that says for visitors. I'm here to do a FOIL request for okay. some public documents. Are you recording? I'm taking some pictures and video. Okay, you cannot do that. Why can't, you cannot I, do can't I do that? that? There was a lot of signs up front. None of them said that there was no pictures but or I'm videos sure allowed. You know you're, you're, what'd you say? I could do it in person, though, right? No, we don't do a FOIA request here. Why not? You're the agency with the records. The woman was wrong. The building was public, and anyone could enter it, and Sean had every right to film inside. Seeing her aggressive demeanor, Sean decided to teach her a lesson. So I will ask you to leave because we cannot have any filming in here. So the only reason you're asking me to leave is because I'm recording? Ma'am, you are very clear. I can hear you perfectly okay. fine. And I just you're, you're you're not my parole officer. I don't have a parole officer, I'm and you're not parole. you're not you don't have no authority over me. So I would ask that you de-escalate a little bit and talk to me with some respect, the same way I've been talking to you with respect, ma'am. Do I make myself clear? Is that is that spoke is that is that talking to somebody with respect, ma'am? You don't you don't like it, do you? After seeing that Sean wouldn't back down so easily, she left the place and called her fellow parole officers, who were even worse when it came to understanding the law. How you doing? Hey, how are you? So this gentleman is requesting for a FOIL. I explained to him, FOILs are not done here. They're done through a request online. He's reporting us. He's not on parole. I've asked him to leave the I'm just taking some pictures and video in the publicly accessible area, sir. May I get your name? I'm trespassing. How am I trespassing? This is a public lobby. Can I just get your names and badge numbers? All three of them appeared nervous and shocked when they confronted Sean as they lacked the knowledge to tackle him. They were too proud to accept that he was legally allowed to carry out filming. However, one of the parole officers proved a little too difficult. I do have business here. What's your business? I'm an independent journalist. I'm working on a story. This is a publicly accessible area. This is a lobby. Um, I'm working on a story on the New York State Department of Correction and Community Supervision. Okay. They, they have a, a, a 
unit that deals with if you want information from DOCCS that they can provide that to you? Oh, I'm sure they do have a unit that provides information. I just like to go randomly and unexpectedly to public uh, offices and publicly accessible offices and, and conduct my investigation. May I get your names and badge numbers? Preston, 1939. What would you say, sir? Preston, 1939. Preston? And your name? You're the one that said I was trespassing. I'd like to know who says I'm trespassing. I'm not giving money. Why would that? Are you a public servant? I'm not giving money. Do you work for the public, sir? Of course. So why wouldn't you acknowledge yourself to a member of the public? So I'm not well, you you don't know any you don't know who anybody is until you meet them. Exactly. I don't know who you are. And you just met me. At this point, Sean realized he was up against some tyrants, so he asked for a supervisor. So you're not going to provide your name? Are you a supervisor here? No. None of you are supervisors? No. Can I speak to a supervisor? They went to go get And you told me your name and badge number, right, sir? Thank you. Appreciate the professionalism. Sir, the supervisor has instructed you to leave, you're trespassing. If you stay on the premises, we're going to call the police department and have the rest of the trespassing. You can call the police department. It's fine. This is a publicly accessible area. I'm here conducting bit lawful business. How is this a restricted area if the door is open? I don't understand. Actually, the door is not supposed to be open. The door is not supposed to be open? It should be buzzed in. So maybe it didn't lock from the last person who left. But this is a restricted area. Despite being threatened with an arrest, Sean made it clear that he wouldn't surrender his constitutional rights. Finally, the supervisor arrived, who wasn't any different from the other official. Well, the door was wide open. Hey, sir, how are you? Hey, how are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? Are you a supervisor here? Yes, sir. Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Sean. I'm an independent journalist. I don't have any identification on me, and I wouldn't hand it over if I did. What's the purpose of your visit? So I'm an independent journalist. My name is Sean. I'm here to exercise my First Amendment right just to gather some gather some information. I'm working on a story on the New York State Department of Corrections. Excuse me. Sure, sir. Give me one second. Yeah, no problem. You have no ID. I, I wasn't aware that I need to carry ID, sir. You're in a government building, in a law enforcement building. Do you have identification? I wasn't aware I was, I was obligated to carry question, identification, sir. sir. Do you have identification? No, and if I did, I no wouldn't give it to you. No, and if I did, I wouldn't give it to you, sir. I haven't broken any laws. Shortly after, the supervisor left as he got a call. Sean remained in the room with the other officers momentarily before the supervisor arrived back. And this time, he had a much more straightforward agenda against him. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Do you have identification with you? You asked me that several times already, sir, and I don't, and I, if I did, I would, wouldn't okay. give it to you. You have no legitimate purpose to be here. You need to exit this space. You may stand outside. Otherwise, you will be arrested. For what? Okay, trespass. This is a public You building. have no legitimate business here. Please leave. My, my legitimate business is asking questions of government officials. I'm here okay, to ask questions. We do questions. not speak to the media. I can give you a number that you can call and speak to. Please exit Okay, so the can, you grab, can you grab me the I number? I will give it to you. Please exit the building. All right. I'm just going to take some pictures you of these publicly no, accessible... I need you to exit the building So this is a small lobby. Excuse I'm just here to grab some content sir, from my story, and then I'll be on my way, me. okay? I need you to leave the building. And I Do will, as soon as I'm done no. conducting my lawful I, business, no. sir. You have no lawful business here. I do, Please, sir. Please, no. You have not produced identification as requested by me. I'm the supervisor in this building. I don't have to I provide you identification. Okay, then you have to leave. The supervisor was getting increasingly impatient with each minute, and his demeanor worsened. Despite this egregious behavior, Sean wasn't to be intimidated, as he kept questioning him back. Maddie's on the phone with your parents. There's, there's no need to waste law enforcement time. Please exit the building. This is a constitutionally protected it's, activity. You have to leave. This Are you is law enforcement? Yes. You're in law enforcement? Yes. Please exit the building. You have no legitimate So you're saying if I don't exit the building, you're going to arrest me? You will be arrested. Please exit the building. And your name is? My name is Officer Koshin. Koshin? Yeah. Koshin. Officer Koshin. Please. All right, officer. Your name, Koshin, will be on the federal civil rights lawsuit, please okay? Please exit the building. Thank you. And your name? You have refused to and your name? provide any documentation. I'm asking. I'm asking one of. Leave. I'm asking one of your officers their Please name, leave. and they're not providing they their do name. They not have to answer you. 
please leave. All right, if well, you have a, we'll figure out who he is. Identification, we'll be more than happy to talk to you. I so because that, I because I, I don't have identification, you're not going please to leave. you're not going to talk to me. Please leave. It's truly bizarre to see public officials acting like this, and Sean was visibly frustrated by this treatment. He went on to give them one final lecture before departing the building. Sir, this is ridiculous. This is a small lobby. This is a small public lobby. I've already seen everything that I can see. This is ridiculous for you to be acting this way and for your officers to be acting this way, especially her. Do I make myself clear over there? Please because that's please. not the way you treat members of the public. I don't care if they're on parole Sir. or not. Do you understand me? Sir, you do not okay. have a legitimate Great. business. Leader. I'll wait for law enforcement to come and we'll talk to them, okay? I'm law enforcement as myself, so I'm at directing then, you. Then you're in direct violation of your oath that you took I'm to uphold not. the United States please, Constitution, please. sir. You yes, you are. I'll wait for law enforcement to come and I'll speak to them and see what they have you to say not about have this. A because you're violating my constitutional rights right now, sir. That's what you're doing. And your other officers here are being unprofessional, which is. Makes sense because you're their supervisor, right? After being illegally trespassed from the building, Sean contacted the New Rochelle Police Department to come over and serve justice. Soon, a couple of officers arrived at the scene and the auditor briefed them about the earlier encounter. How are you doing today? Do you mind if I get your name and badge number, sir? Yeah, uh, Cruise 1013. Cruise 1013, thank you. Hi, ma'am. And your name and badge number, please? Duncan 1049. Duncan 1049, thank you, thank you. So I guess you were called here just because I'm filming in publicly accessible areas of this facility and, and around. I'm an independent journalist. My name's Sean. I'm working on a story for the Department of Corrections. And they didn't seem to like that I was in the public lobby. I was in the lobby. It says visitors welcome this way. There was no restricted access of anything, no signage that said it was restricted. But they're claiming that it's a restricted area, even though it's a public lobby. So they said they were going to call you. I said I would wait out here. And so you guys came to see what you guys have to say about it. Okay. All right? Uh, yeah, sure. No problem. Okay, yeah, no problem. No problem. The cops entered the Department of Corrections, and Sean hoped for an apology. However, they had a pretty unusual claim to make, which left the auditor puzzled. So we're going to be able to get all the body camera footage. Hey, Sarge, how are you? You mind if I get your name and badge number, Sergeant? Sure, 34. 34, Murphy? Yes. Thank you, Sarge. I appreciate it. Thank you. I will be getting the body camera footage as soon as we're done here. I'm going to get the body camera footage of what they're saying for full transparency. Stay tuned to the channel so you don't miss the body camera footage video when that comes in. It's always very interesting to hear what they have to say when they think no one's listening. Not many people request body camera footage. So they're not really worried about what they're saying inside. I've caught, as you all know, so many law enforcement officers saying the most egregious things when their body camera's on. It's ridiculous. Hey, Sarge. Hi. Oh, so my name is Sean. I'm an independent journalist. I'm just gathering content in publicly accessible areas for a story I'm working on. Sean, S-E-A-N, part of my story. Okay, are you aware that this is a private property? This isn't private property. This is public property. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I was told by Mr. Barry Jacobson, the owner of this property. It's a private property, so I'm just trying to find out right now, did he give you permission to a video record? A Barry Jacobson? Yes. A private individual? He's the owner. According to these cops, the building was owned by a private individual. But despite this, it was currently serving as a public office, and Sean had every right to be there. He once again countered the cops, proving his competency regarding the law. Oh, so he leases the section out to the New York State Department of Corrections uh, Community it's Supervision? It's two, there's two companies inside this building. Okay. We have um, the Department of Corrections, and what is... Uh, like a drug rehab? Yes. Yes, they are uh, hearing from the Mr. Barry Jacobson on the building. We call them, we find we ask him if he ha give anyone any permission to be on this property currently right now to be with a recording. He said no, he didn't give anyone any permission, but he would like to know who's out here. Technically, if a government agency is leasing the property, it then becomes under the government agency's control for as far as 
publicly accessible areas. That's a, it's a government agency, it's funded by taxpayers. But if someone else owns this property and they don't want me here, that's fine. I don't need permission to be here. There's no restricted area signs. There's no keep out private property signs. So there's no way of me knowing that. So I have every right to be here currently. If the owner of the property doesn't want me here, that's a different story. I already got all the content that I needed, so. John was technically correct as the place had been leased to the government and was now a public building. However, despite this, he decided to end his audit as he made his way out of there. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Have a great day, okay? Take care. Stay safe out there. Thanks for not violating my rights today. <laughs> you wouldn't do that? Great, thanks Sarge. Moving on, watch how this tyrant female cop was owned by this woman. Morgan Branch. I got my children in the car. You better I don't, back. I don't the care. You better back. Shut my door up. Don't tell me what. Shut my door. Damn! I run this. Get her! Get out my get face! Get my out. children are in the car. I can't. This is a standard with no e-brake. Well, I ain't doing anything out. wrong. What the get fuck is this? You will not take my phone. This is a normal traffic violation, and you are in denial of rights don't under the color of. Put your finger in my. I am buckled. I am no threat to you. You uh, will. Back. Oh. Superintendent now. The officers took no time to get hands on with the poor woman who had done nothing wrong. She repeatedly asserted how she could not get out of her vehicle, but the cops didn't seem to understand her problem. Well, my vehicle will drive off. You're going to get Ma'am, you will be your lieutenant right now. Don't work. I said that five times. Look at me. Get your lieutenant now. We don't have a lieutenant. My kids are in this car. There's no e-brake on it. I'm not, and I am recording this entire interaction. We are too. I went and got my children from McDonald's. The female trooper was the aggressor, and she didn't even try to mine her words. Several officers had arrived on the scene and were trying to ease out the situation. Why are you screaming at us? She's screaming at me. She came up nasty as hell. Okay, I said, did you not see the lights? Is what I and said. I pulled and into I here. You went Good in for here you. pretty recklessly with children in the car. You I am not reckless recklessly. as hell. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. And this is a normal traffic stop. You are a snotty girl. This is a normal traffic stop. You are all... Yes. 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 I provided my social. Absolutely. I have registration. This is a normal traffic stop. And you are in violation, denial of rights under the color of law, in which I will prosecute in your agency. Yes, ma'am, I will. Don't thank my family ain't lawyers. The officers had no regard for the woman and her little children sitting in the back as they kept on being abusive and refused to give her any relaxation. No, ma'am. No, I'm sir. Ma I am not. You all are under, out of control. Absolutely out of control. This is a normal traffic stop. Please get my stuff. Write me my I ticket mean, for no, my false interest. Will you shut up tell me quit doing all right? Because I'm getting pissed off. You don't want me to get pissed my off, all right? So I need your name and I need your date of birth and I need to write. Morgan Branch, 11 9 1999. Please shut my door. Paige, shut my door. Have you have woken drinking? up my children. Like that, no. What, what's your date of birth again, ma'am? 11 9 1999. The female officer was then removed from the situation and a supervisor arrived. That's when Morgan tried to tell her what happened earlier. I tried to, she said, she said, can I give it, give it, I need your license. I went to reach in to grab my registration, my license right here. What are you reaching for? Girl, you told me my license. Fast, okay. I, I was right here for the whole thing. I was not reaching fast. She asked for my license. So I went right here in my glove box and got my license and registration. Well, this, this my license ain't on me, but. Yeah, we don't we want to scream. Like, we don't, we don't want, want to cause a, to up, cause a scene. Oh, they're going to be. Yeah. I don't I don't Probably want my children to trust. Them no. Yeah. You'll teach them to be a sovereign citizen because you know the color of Absolutely. Like the However, the male trooper wasn't any different to the other one. It seemed as if they had some personal problem with Morgan as they just wouldn't accept their mistake. And you don't know jack shit about nothing. I know plenty. You wouldn't know shit from Shinola. I know a bunch. <laughs> trooper Mitchell will be up with you shortly, okay? I expect to be not hear any screaming. Who the hell's Mitchell? Is that the blonde yes. bitch? The female trooper. Mm. Okay. Can you please? I request one of you to hand me my ticket. Sure, I'll hand it to you. Okay, I'll take you. Thank you. The trooper was still protecting his female colleague and instead tried to shift the entire blame on Morgan, who was not having any of it. I do not want any more interactions with that woman. Four hours. 
I don't think any of us want another interaction with you, to be honest with you. Well, I'm doing pretty good cooperating well with you. You're calm. We're communicating pretty there's, effectively. Yeah, there's no need for screaming. I hate screaming. Mm -hmm. I hate hollering. There's no need for that. We're communicating. It's childish, to be honest with you. I don't know what the hell her problem was. I'm not talking about her. Well, I know you ain't talking about me. I am. Well, you got opinions or ass? Everybody's got one. Yep. Some have bigger ass than others, too. Mm-hmm. Some have whole asses. How many cars you got on me right now? Five? Stop cussing. <laughs> it's freedom of speech. I can just cuss freely. I'm not menacing or cussing at you. Morgan waited in her car before she got her ticket for expired tag. She kept waiting for a supervisor to arrive, but no one came. Okay. I don't like kissing. I'm sorry. You're offended. You're a police officer. I, I hope you'd have much greater shoulders on than that. For me, cussing freely. Mm -hmm. Why did you think I was West Virginia? I thought that's where you was from. Oh. She got her ticket and left. She posted this interaction on her Facebook profile, and since then, it has received hundreds of shares, with many people expressing outrage at the trooper's behavior. However, as the case is relatively fresh, we don't have any updates regarding the Kentucky State Police, but we can hope that they discipline their officers. Morgan, though, claimed that she'll be filing a complaint soon, and this isn't the last time officers crossed their limits and were put in their place. Sir, I, I'm allowed Back to- the off, dude. Okay. Give me some space, dude. Go ahead and turn. Give me some space, dude. Behind your back. In September 2022, First Amendment auditor Joshua Roberts was just recording from a public place when a couple of employees from Dove Technologies on the other side of the road came over to confront him. You don't have my permission. You can turn that off right now. Have my, have my face what was that? I can't hear you. You don't have my signed authorization to have my face on that camera. Turn it off. Can I have your signed authorization? This guy's coming up aggressive, everyone. One of them appeared very distraught from the fact that Roberts was recording. That's when he came up pretty close to him and did something shocking. Can I help you? No, can, we help, can you help us? Yo, get away from me, buddy. No, no, dude. Who are the you? Get away from me, dude. Why are, why are you here? Back the f Why are you here? I suggest you leave me alone. Uh, you're on private property. Uh, I suggest you do something about that then and get back inside. Ooh. Really? Yeah, really. You like going around with people like this? You, know you think what? that's fun? Don't, don't touch my buddy. That's, oh, go ahead. Touch. Oh, so. Do it. Do it. What, what, Touch it, that's on camera. What, what are Back we doing? the f What are we doing here? Back the f off, buddy. You touch you get tased. Back inside. What, what's going on here? Get the f back inside. Do not touch me. As expected, Roberts was furious to see him getting hands on with his camera and pulling out his taser. Both of them had to back off, but kept on arguing with him. Why did he come up and grab me? I didn't grab back off. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did, buddy. Thing on my no, face. you come up to me get in my face i'll do something buddy get inside get inside whoa dude whoa dude you just come up and grab people what the f is wrong with you your homie did don't hate my homie this is this is private property you say you're filming. this is an easement i'm not on your property you see that that belongs to the city and why why are you here anyway? so let me ask you a question does that give you the right to come up and grab my camera and almost why break it Hey, you assaulted me, buddy. Call, call, call the sheriff's department. Hey, call hey, your hey, husband. Fat boy. Oh man, whoa, oh, this guy's oh, great. Get in, Tubby. Yeah, he, he's freaking hopped up on freaking meth. Look at his teeth. Yeah, look at you, buddy. You come up and grab me for fucking reason. What's your problem? Yeah, what did I do to you? What did I do to you? 
I'm out in public recording and you come up and grab somebody, dude. That guy had no understanding of the law, as Roberts had every right to film from a public space. Soon after, he called the sheriff's office, and minutes later, a couple of deputies arrived from the Florence County Sheriff's Office. Hey, how about this? I go up to you and grab your phone right out of your hand and snatch it. What are you gonna do if I do that? What you, you're gonna beat the shit on me, right? He grabbed my cr Yeah, buddy, I got your name too. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get a nice little talking to with the the police. Oh, nothing. Just gonna assault it out here. That's about it. Getting assaulted. Yeah, by one of their workers. What, what happened? I was just out here taking some pictures, and one of the guys came out here saying he didn't want to be filmed, and he ran up to me, started circling me, grabbed my camera, started pushing up on me. So that sounds like an assault to me. And it's all videotaped. You have it on video? Oh, it's all recorded. Luckily, he didn't break my camera. Otherwise, I probably can show you guys if you want to see it. Because I do want to press charges on him. Was there something involved in the tasing? Oh, I pulled it out in self-defense. Okay. When you come out at me like that and you're about to destroy my stuff and put, do bodily harm to me, you're damn right I'm going to pull a taser on someone. The deputy started to walk over to Dave Technologies to have a talk with the guy, but suddenly stopped and tried giving some law lessons to Robert, which he didn't seem to like much. Okay. Oh yeah, we're gonna do a report on him too. That's fine, we can, yep. we can do that. Oh yeah, they're gonna have to learn. Just, I just need to give this deputy your information for me, all right? You have an ID or something? I don't have an ID. Okay. Okay. Yeah, buddy, you're gonna learn. You can't come outside and grab people, man. That ain't right. All right. Calls him to get is it that. free speech? Am I allowed to say stuff? Well, you have a freedom of speech, but there's also something called breach of peace. Okay, I'd like to see you try that, buddy. Those people put hands on me. I'm the victim. So you want you want to turn it around on me? I'm not turning it around. Please do so. What I'm telling you is, you guys are known to be the biggest pieces of. Sh Instead of going inside and holding him accountable for assaulting Roberts, the deputy stood and started to issue threats against him. Let me explain something to you, all right? Yeah, yeah sure. Explain to me public photography and people coming up and touching me. What did I do wrong? Are well, you going to let me talk? Go on ahead. What I was saying is, I don't need you yelling while I'm trying to talk to this man because that's going to cause him to yell, cause a scene. You get mad, he's gonna get mad, then it escalates. Okay. Just talk to this deputy. Let me tell you something. I'm allowed to say whatever the hell I want. You want if I want to say to him because he came up and grabbed me and I want to call him a dummy for doing that, I have every right to. What? If you yell across this parking lot while well, you have all these people standing around, that is called breach of peace. You want to try that, buddy. I will lock you up. You want to try that. Yes, I will. You want to try that. All right. Try I'm it. Not going try right, it. Dude. Try it. Name and badge right. number. Corporal Driggers, one at eight. Name and badge number. Driggers, 230. All right, go do my assault charge. The supervisor went inside, whereas Robert stood out and gave his information to the other deputy. He then urged the deputy to go inside and confront the person who had been hiding. Look, they, they had to run me first, everyone. They can't run the actual criminal. They had to run me first. You got a good phone number? Uh, no, I don't. You don't have a phone number? I don't have a phone number. So you understand? When they, if you do want to file a report, when they, they're not going to be able to contact you. Oh, so I can't file a report then because I don't have a phone? Did I say that? I said oh, they're no. going to have the issue contact. No, I have an email address. Can I give you my email address? Sure. Pepperoniaudits at USA.com. You said at USA.com? USA.com. All together. Yeah, like I said, he should be questioning the guy, the short fat guy who grabbed me. I don't know why he's hiding inside. I just gave you my information. Now, let's do this report. Can you go tell him, go question the guy who assaulted me? He's going to conduct his investigation. It's not my job to supervise, supervise. So you can't tell him the information I just gave you? you what, the description, description of the individual? Do you see him up there? No, he's not. He's inside hiding. He hasn't left either. I've gotten every license plate, every car that's come in and out of here. I made sure of that. What was he wearing? Yeah, a blue shirt. Short, uh, dark hair, fat. Probably the only short fat one in there. 
Just like his supervisor, this deputy also started to raise concerns against Roberts, completely ignoring what happened earlier. It seemed as if the deputies had already formed an opinion. Am I on the property? I'm assuming you were if you were over there. Oh, you're assuming I was. Were you over there? You said you were filming that car. You know what? I'm not going to answer any more questions. You walk around the vehicles, filming the car, so that means you was on the property. I'm not going to answer any more questions. That's how stupid you, you are. That's how stupid you are. Keep on going. Yeah. This is called a career killer right here, this camera. Yeah. yeah. That's all you got to do in it. Yeah, it, it is. And you got to violate rights and not uphold I'm your not violating your, oath. your right. You can film all day. Well, you just said I was on their property. You said you was on their property. I never did once. You said you was walking around the car see, and filming see, the cars. See, I said I was filming every license plate and every car going so, in and out. Does, right. Did I say I was inside their if property? If you do this report, you need to explain to me in detail how it got to the point Do where... you see where I'm standing? Do you see where I'm standing right now? Hey, I'm over here. You're standing by the mailbox. I'm Technically, this is still their property. You're so Until dumb. You're in a road, road I road dare road. you, man. I dare you. Give dare me, me to what? Trespass me. If you think this is their property, trespass me. You need to explain to me what happened to the point where you say you got assaulted. How about I talk to this guy? Is this your supervisor? Is you're not doing Man, you're just an idiot. Uh, walk over there and talk to him. Shortly after, another deputy arrived at the spot, and Roberts went over to talk to him, hoping that someone might be interested in knowing the truth. Yeah. Deputy Potion 229. All right, I just got assaulted, and this guy really doesn't care. He's not really. He's, he's just talking shit, running his mouth. That's all he does. I'm just talking shit. You hear to this ask guy's? Him. He said he got assaulted, but he is yet to tell me how. I, I he told got you. Circled by this guy. I've told him multiple times this guy is terrible. If you're mm -hmm. a supervisor, recommend him. I'm not He'll. A all right. Can you help me and do your job? Our and supervisor's over there. You know, cuss him out. Yeah. No. Why did I cuss him out? Because he said he was going to arrest me after yeah, I got he assaulted. He said he was going to arrest you for breach of peace if you didn't exactly. shut your mouth. Exactly. How about you shut your mouth? How about you do that, buddy? Okay. Just shut your mouth. I don't is you're useless. Do anything you say you're you. useless, bro. Okay. You're a useless public servant. Right. That's all you are. And then he went boom, grabbed my camera and twisted as hard mm -hmm. as he could. He almost broke the lens off. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious if he's allowed to do that. Can I do that to anyone? Like if I see a girl in public and she has a purse on and I'm like, "Give me that purse. Let me see it for a second." I can just grab it. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. So that's that's illegal. Yeah. Okay. All right, just making sure. Moments later, the supervisor arrived, and it appeared that Roberts wouldn't be getting the justice he wanted. Hi, right, Mr. Roberts. I spoke with the two gentlemen that came out and dealt with you. All right. All their information is going to be entered into the report as well as your statement that you gave this deputy. All right. All right. I made them aware that, yes, you can view video from a public area, which the roadway is public, but if you cross over into the I've track. checked the property lines. I don't need directives. Okay. Well, well, well I, I still got to tell you, okay? You don't have to tell me. Well, I'm going. The supervisor kept on talking and tried to teach some law to Roberts, but he managed to ignore that all adding a touch of humor to it. Well, you know if what? You go if you to their property, you will be arrested for trespass. If you wash your hands afterwards. Just wash your hands. Nothing to do with I just don't want over yeah. your hands. So make sure if you ever master to wash your hands afterwards, okay? Right. You go on the property, you're gonna go to jail. If you smoke, that's not good, man. So please don't smoke. Please, please don't do. Please don't. Oh, there'll be a big protest here, buddy. I'm gonna have big signs that say "Dove," and I'd like to see you come try do something. Then we're gonna have a nice little protest out here, peaceful protest. I bet you're upset I didn't have any warrants. Hey, remember, wash your hands, man. Just wash your hands. However, just when it seemed that the altercation is over, Sergeant Paul Morrison appeared out of nowhere and did something shocking. How you doing, sir? Uh, not too good. Wow, what's going on today, buddy? 
I had some dude inside. Oh, you're getting really close now. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like to get close. I like to talk to people. Can you stop? No, no, sir. So I, I want to talk to you. What's dude, going on, stop, my friend? Stop fucking getting so close to me, dude. What's going on, man? Dude, stop approaching me. Sir, I, I'm Back allowed to. Off, dude. Okay. Give me some space, dude. Go ahead and turn. Give me some space, Put your dude. Behind your back. No, give me some. Next, witness the remarkable moment when a dedicated deputy steps in to restore order and teach a valuable lesson to an overzealous officer. Hey, what's up, man? How are you? Hey, Thompson. Yeah, I know, buddy. Um, Davis, the reason I got the reason I stopped you, man, I stopped you at 90. Yeah. He's an old agent. Where are you coming from, I mean? My, my wife's parents. Your wife's parents? All right, but I'm going to ask you a straight question. What did you have to drink this evening, Davis? Not a damn thing, bro. Not a thing at all? No. Nothing. No. Here, do me a favor. Look at me. I'm just going to move my finger outside. You know what I'm doing. Check it. Move your eye. The deputy recognized Davis as he was an officer with the Gainesville Police Department. After being pulled over, Davis threatened the deputy, saying he had a backup gun with him. Oh, I hate to be in this situation, but I, I got to check, man. You, I'm not you drinking. know where I'm coming from. I'm not driving. Uh, well, I, I I'm just know. I'm not drinking. Okay. I dropped her off. I'm going home. I'm not drinking. Uh, I promise, man. Uh, well, hey, David, you got any medical conditions? No, sir. Take your medication? No, sir. We're going to have to contact. No, sir. All right, look. We're going to go ahead and do, like I said, you know what we're going to do? So I'm going to just check real fast. You just face towards me? Uh, I don't want to do HCM. I'll do any other test. I just don't do Okay, so, David, I can smell alcohol coming off your breath. Now. I get you, man. No, I, okay. Is okay. my wedding or not? Okay. Awesome. Thompson, David G. Thompson. Buddy, you're tying my hands. <laughs> I will do the good product test. I'm just telling you, I have not been drinking. But I can smell alcohol coming off your breath. My wife's been drinking, man. Oh, okay, I but just dropped off. I understand that, but like, I understand, but look. When questioned about whether he had consumed any alcohol, he adamantly denied it. However, when the officer mentioned detecting alcohol on his breath, Davis shifted blame, claiming it was his wife who had been drinking. Despite this, he continued to refuse to take the breathalyzer test. You know how it goes, it's still a safety thing. I get you, man. And I know why you won't do HGN, because you know it's the one that's scientific out of the three of them. I get you. You haven't been drinking, why don't you want to do it? Because I'm just telling you, I just want to go, man, please. Uh, let me get him on with it. Hey, 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 you, you are... You were tying my hands pretty hard here, buddy. I'm not tying your hands, man. I'll do any test you want. I'm telling you, I haven't been drinking. I just want to get on my way. Okay, then, like I said, you just said you didn't want to do HDN. But if you haven't been drinking, there's no reason not to do HDN, and you know that. You and I both know that. Oh, you I realize I'm uh, I know that, but I'm... I'm, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, buddy, are you willing to do 18 or not? It's up yeah. to you. Okay. That's all I want to do with you real fast. <laughs> Face towards me. You know how it goes? Put your feet together for me. Legs straight, arm down by your side. Straight ahead at me. Just as the deputy was about to start the HGN evaluation, Davis started yelling his name. As soon as the officer warned Davis about his increasingly aggressive behavior, Davis promptly lowered his voice and started talking normally again. Face towards me again. Awesome. Put your feet together for me. We did the walking turn, man. Well, you know what's that? You know, you know what's that? Come on, Davis. Davis. Awesome. Face towards me. You know, you know how the, you know awesome. the three days. Davis. Come on. Davis. Please. You're starting. You you are literally yelling at me on the side of the road. You're starting to be belligerent. You need to calm down. Okay. It's just it's been rough now. I, I understand that, but you know where I'm coming from. Come on. All right. Feet together, legs straight, arms down by your side, look straight ahead at me. All right. Like I said, you're side to side. Follow your eyes, eyes only. Don't move your head. Focus on for me again. Davis first tried to talk Thompson out of being arrested. He talked very politely and maintained a humble demeanor. However, his attitude quickly turned vicious when he saw his strategies wouldn't work anymore and started getting personal with Thompson. Davis, we're gonna see if we'll do an OR for you. I, I know you are, and you're also intoxicated. Do you know Yes or no? 
make it past the roll slip on Mary Mom. We did, yeah. That, that, that's the roll slip on Mary Mom. Just a question, man. I'm just back. Davis. Yes or no, man? Do you know Mom's roll? Yes or no? That is the question. Davis, I, I've been cordial with you. Please be cordial with me. You have sex with my Be cordial with me, David. Why don't you ask the question? And I'm asking you to be cordial. Why don't you say no if it's the answer no? Do you know Molly? Instead of owning up to his mistakes and acting like a responsible adult, Davis switched to attacking Deputy Thompson, asking him personal questions. Did you ever slept with her? Mr. Thompson, I'm asking you a question. Davis. Sir. Davis. Sir. Money. I'm on. Sure. Uh, yes or no, sir? Davis. Yes or no, sir? Davis. Mr. Thompson, I'm asking you a question. Davis. Did you ever have sex with intercourse or not? It takes remarkable strength to overlook comments about one's personal life. This officer exemplifies the utmost standards of ethics and professionalism, maintaining composure regardless of Davis's attempts to provoke him. Have you ever slept with a married woman named Molly Ross? I believe your back life is a long I don't know if you've been those on or not. Thank you. Davis kept asking to have a separate chemical test performed on him and changed his statements from consuming no alcohol to consuming two beers. It's really He kept saying that even though he would submit to the state's chemical test if it was required, he was not doing it freely or voluntarily. I would also like my own independence I hope you know that. It's a very simple request. I don't understand why you're not answering me. I just want to prove my innocence. Please drive safely. I don't want to get hurt. 
Later on, Davis agreed to take the breathalyzer test and consented to undergo it. However, he clarified that he was just doing what the state required him to do by law and not because of his own will. I just don't understand what's going on right now. After being taken to jail, Davis provided a sufficient sample for the Intoxilizer 9000, which produced a blood alcohol concentration of 0.144%. This reading aligned closely with the earlier portable breath test result of 0.142%. Independent chemical test as well? Yes, sir. Okay. We're going to do that here right after this. You said you want to go to Habersham? Yeah, Habersham Battle. Actually, I don't know. I really prefer to play. Okay. Davis was charged with DUI and immediately resigned the next day while entering the plea of no contest to the allegation of reckless driving. On November 11th, State Court Judge Roberts sentenced the defendant to a year and a half of probation and a fine of $1,147. You, you can speak to him. Okay. Yeah, but you'll be in handcuffs and will be at the jail. In January 2017, First Amendment auditor Philip Turner, who is famously known for his YouTube channel, the Batusai came upon several Comal County deputies making an arrest. Immediately, he pulled out his camera and started filming the encounter. There's something wrong with being here? Yes, sir, there is. What's I that? Don't, I don't want you to be in direct line with that vehicle. I'd like for you to go back to where you were standing. You can continue filming all you'd like, but I don't, I don't want you right here. Am I interfering? Uh, well, technically, now you're starting to pose into somebody else's private property. With your, with your video, video in, yes, sir. As expected, police officers just don't like being filmed. And just a minute later, one of the deputies came over and asked the auditor to stop filming. However, he had no idea he was up against someone who knew the law more than the cops. Hey, did they give you permission to film inside their truck? I don't need permission on public. In public? I don't in somebody, need permission. In somebody's vehicle? I don't need permission on public. No, not to film us, you're correct. But to film inside somebody's vehicle, that's an extension of their house, and that is a private place. So you do need somebody's permission to film inside their vehicle. But is that a crime? Uh, if they decide it is, yes. Who's they? The two we got in the back of our cars. If they don't want you filming or they, you didn't get permission from them, you can't be filming inside their cars. Well, you so guys got I'll, the door look, open. I'll, look, all I'm asking you to do is go stand back over where you were. Even if I was back there, I could still see inside the okay, car. Okay, so go stand back over there. It's simple as that. Because right now, now that I'm having to come over here and ask you to move again, now you're interfering with our investigation. Because instead of me being able to focus over here, I got to focus on you. So if you could just go stand over there, I can call a supervisor if you'd like to speak to a supervisor. Yeah, you can, go ahead and call a supervisor. You can make any complaints you'd like, but I'm, all I'm asking you to do is go stand back over there where you were. Just go ahead and call a supervisor. Okay, do me a favor and go stand back over there for me, all right, bud? I don't see what's wrong being here. Turner stood his ground and refused to be bullied by the deputy who was trying to intimidate him into leaving them alone. Stand back where you were. 
There was not an issue where you're standing, where you were standing. Now there's an issue where you're at. I because I'm filming it. inside the truck, right? Yes, sir. You can film us all you want. We don't care. We want you to do it from a safe distance. So if you could go back to where you were, that'd be uh, greatly appreciated. All right. If if the issue is with me filming here inside the truck, I won't film inside the truck. If you could go stand back where you were, please. There's not an issue with you filming us. There's an issue with you getting any closer to the scene. I'm not getting any closer than here. Okay. Do not move from here. All right. Any closer from here, we're, we're gonna have any any more issues. Okay. I, I already told you I'm not moving from here, and, okay. and that's it. Thank you. I encourage you to film. Thank you. Realizing that the auditor was technically correct, the deputy decided to retreat. However, it was not long before he returned and claimed that a supervisor was on the way. Uh, sergeant, here, he said, he'll be over here talking to you in just a little bit, okay? What's up? Our, our sergeant, okay. he's, uh, he's going to be over here talking to you in just a little bit. He's here. He's actually... All right. You got a business card or anything? A business card? Yeah. Not on me. I can get you one out of my car in a little bit. All right, cool. Uh, you need my name, badge number? What do you need? Yeah, that's what I was going to... That that's what I was going to need, but I can't hear all the highway noise. Okay, so... You need all of our badge numbers? or Just yours, and uh, I guess if the supervisor needs to speak with me, I'll talk to him. Oh, he doesn't need to speak to you. I thought you wanted to speak to him. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk to him. I mean, if you don't, want, if you don't need to speak to him, then I'll tell him not to waste his time. No, no, he's already here, so I'm not going to waste his time. He already showed over here, so I'll talk to him briefly. Okay. Okay. And like I said, he'll be more than happy to give you anybody's name or badge number that's here. Okay. Um, and if you need business cards or anything like that, you give us a little bit, we'll be able to get you some business cards too if you'd like. No, just yours, that's it. Okay. okay. I, can, I can get you one. Okay. All right, hang tight for me. However, suddenly the deputy had a change of thought as he returned back and started asking for ID. Turner, knowing his constitutional rights, refused to give in. Do you have your information? Your driver's license? What's that? Do you have your driver's license or name at birth? For what? Because now you're a witness to this crime that we're doing. What crime is that? The crime that we got these people in the back of these cars for. I don't know what crime they committed. You don't have to know. But what, okay, but how do I know what they did though? I don't know what they did. Okay, they broke the law. They're in possession of narcotics. That's why they're in the back of our cars. Okay, now you're telling me that. Okay. Yeah. So, do you have your name and date of birth? No. Or driver's license? No. So you're gonna refuse to be listed as a witness since you're, you sat here and videotaped the entire scene? If you need a copy of the video, I can give you a copy of the video. Well, yeah, but we're also gonna need to identify you in our report that you were here videoing, so when we come to get a copy of that video, we can get that. All right, let me talk to your supervisor. Shortly after, the deputy was joined in by another officer who appeared even more intimidating and started threatening the auditor with arrest. He said that he won't want to give us her name, his name or date of birth until he talks to our supervisor. So. And you're probably gonna end up going to jail because right now you're witnessing a crime. Well, I asked to talk to a supervisor. He's here, so why can I speak? Because you're refusing to give your information, you'll be going to jail for failure to identify as you're a witness to a crime. So I need to give you my so I need to give you my ID to speak to your supervisor? Is that what you're telling me? No. Okay, I need to speak why, to your supervisor. Why do you need to speak to your supervisor? Because I requested what to speak to him. That? Because I requested to speak to him and he's here. Okay. So what's your point? He's here, I need to speak with him. He's got you've got no part of the scene, right? But you, you want can, to speak to our supervisor. You can, you can speak to him. Okay. Yeah. But you'll be in handcuffs and it'll be at the jail. Is that what you want to do? I need to speak to your supervisor. Is that what you want to do? I need do? to speak to your supervisor. Realizing they lacked legal grounds for arrest, the officers resorted to fabricating excuses and even threatened the auditor with trespassing charges. Why don't you understand it? You put yourself in this situation right here. You see that? You're on, on private what? property. Private right now. or public? You're on private property right now. Okay, what is that? What does that have to do with the Do you have permission to be here? Did the owner trespass me? Well, he actually, this guy... He didn't want you here. This guy actually did come tell us he wanted you to leave. That guy right there? Yeah. So... Trey, what's his name? So what's your point? What's, his, what's the guy's name that don't want me here? So do you want to identify yourself so we can list you as a witness to this crime, or...? I'm, I'm, I'm just asking a simple question. The guy that you just talked to, he doesn't want me here. Yes. So is he trespassing? Would you like for me to go ask him to tell you to leave himself? Don't you, do you already have that notice? Yes, he told us when he came over here and gave me his business Then why card. do you have to go ask him, then? If you would like for him to tell you himself. He can tell me whatever if, he needs to do. If, you, if, if he needs to tell me to leave, I'll leave. Simple as that. He needs to give me a, he needs to give me a warning before I, before he can trespass me. Turner was not being intimidated by these corrupt officers, and he continued to film as he waited for their supervisor to arrive. Shortly after, the supervisor did arrive, and he explained the entire incident. Do you mind if I go on your property and talk to him, or? Hang out here. He can hang out here. Oh, no, no, I was, like, I was, he can hang out. He can hang out. No, no, I was asking if we can go over there because of the road noise. I can't. I'm not able to hear you. Oh uh, well, we're leaving here in a minute anyway. Okay. So, all right, so before I leave here, I just need to get his badge number and his uh, or his business card, whatever the case may be. It's Deputy Cameron Chelly, 315 is my badge number. Okay. okay, all right, so my only problem is I was just, 
there. This is what I do. I film what public officials do on public property. I'm a journalist. I gather content for stories. That's cool. Um, but this officer here was telling me that I had to move back over there. I couldn't stand over there. And I was asking him why. He told me that I, I wasn't allowed to film inside the vehicle here. But I mean, that's that's how, that's their privacy too. We got to get their consent to go in. So what makes it any different for you? Well, that's to go in. Yeah. But I'm not going in. I'm just I'm just observing. That's kind of like equivalent to this is his property, but I can't film it because it's okay. on his property. Okay. You, know, okay. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't make sense, and it's not against the law. Okay. So he needs to get educated on that because okay. that's clearly not the case. Okay. okay. Now, am I currently being detained here, or am I free to go? You're free to go, man. Well, I, I, I'm here. Need, I came all the way from Canada to come need to, to you. Identify. The supervisor clearly had more knowledge of the law than his deputy, and he practically had no problem with the auditor filming the cops. However, just like his deputies, the sergeant also turned on him and started to demand his ID. He spoke to the sergeant, so I need to get your name and date of birth. I, I can, can give you a copy of the vehicle. I can give you a copy of the video. I don't need a copy of the vehicle. I can give you a business card. I need card. your identifying information so I can list you, you in the need report your ID in the as a witness. Yeah. As a witness. Right now, you're filling the ID as a witness to a crime. What crime? Hey, 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 exactly. what's, what's your first name, man? I know what what's, what's your first name, sir? I'll give you my first name. It's Philip. Philip. Yes. Philip. I'll give you that. Best case scenario, best case scenario, that female and that male says that we did something against the law. Eight cops, eight cops against one, one, one person, right? So you know who I would want? I would want the guy who's not even involved in this to be my witness. That's how it works. Like I said, this is what no, I no, do. No, no, that's how it works. No, that's what we're trying to explain to you. So they need me as a witness. You're, you're part of a. You're part of a, it's. You're part of any type of information that anybody that comes. In. We're gonna have to ID him because he's in our cameras now. Him? Just, Turner remained calm and refused to ID himself, as he knew that he isn't legally obliged to. However, just then, the previous deputy made an absurd statement that further proved his lack of understanding as a law enforcement officer. See, he's standing here, and they're gonna be like, "Well, who's this guy? Did he have anything to do with the scene? Well, why didn't y'all identify him?" So that, that's what I'm trying to get at. Hey, where, where'd you come from? That's not relevant. It's not relevant? No, it's not. So you just, How do we know you didn't get out of this vehicle? Go really? behind and you're with them and you walked over. Did you, did you just really from? ask me that? I don't, did I seriously just ask you that? Is that a serious question? Yeah, it actually is a serious question. Why would you randomly walk up to this and then fail to identify yourself? I already told your supervisor what I do. I'm it's a journalist. Really, I really don't care what you do. It doesn't matter. So, you have a question? No, I just I'm just waiting on this business card and I'm out of here. That's it. I gave you, I gave you my name and badge number. I asked for a business card. You said you were going to go get it. We don't have any. We don't have any. Have any man. Man. Okay, what's your name and badge number? My name is Cameron Chelly. My badge number is three one five. Okay, thank you. For, all right, now. Like I said, I already told y'all. It was really absurd as to why the deputies and the sergeant were making such a fuss about filming an incident from a safe distance. Particularly annoying was the deputy who kept on intimidating Turner despite him constantly ignoring him. You gonna give him your name and date of birth or not? I'm talking to your sergeant right now. He's, he's not talking to you, he's on the phone. I'm not talking to you either, I'm talking he's, to your sergeant. He, it doesn't matter. Guess what, we both have the same job. We he's a higher rank than one you. One way or another. He's a higher rank than you. That's why I speak. That's why this is why I speak with. He's here, that's so great. that's who I'm speaking with. That's great. Okay. That, I made contact with you before he did. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm not sure you're really versed in the law good enough in the fact that you're failing to ID. You will ID or you officer. will not leave here. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to your, to your supervisor right now. What would you say your first name was again? What? What'd you say your first name was again? If you told him, I just forgot it. Because I would like to address you by first name. You can address me by sir, okay. mister. Just then, the sergeant pulled the auditor on the side and tried calming him down. It was evident that even the sergeant was not too happy with his deputies and didn't fully agree with their action. You're not doing anything wrong, and uh, but here's the deal. They got a point there. I mean, it's, you're... Worst case scenario is that your camera would be a part of evidence, but we're not going to go there because I have a camera. I have plenty of cameras going, so I don't need your camera. Now, if something were to happen to where, man, we get into a shooting or something or a fight and somebody gets hurt, then you know what? I'm taking your camera because that's so easy. So you got to be careful with that in the, lot, in the future, okay, when you're doing this. But, but, because, but on because, that one, I, I'll tell you, no, 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 there no, was no. a shooting on 6th Street that happened not too long ago, and I helped aid it, them catching the shooting. And, and I have no problem with that. No, 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 but, that, but that's what that's what's called. I understand. It's not, it's not that I want your camera because I want you to stop doing this. These guys are up to no good. Technically, I didn't come up here. Um, at the very beginning, I came here when they were already in, when they were set on the, on the curve right there, and yeah. they were being handcuffed. I didn't see anything come out the car. All I know is I saw a truck go around the car, uh, I mean a dog go around the car, and that was it. The next thing I know, I see them put things in brown bags, and that's it. I don't know what happened until that officer came over and told me they're being arrested for narcotics. 
I was like, oh, oh, okay. But I mean, you can't, as a witness, you can't feed me that type of information. So then I wouldn't be a credible witness. The sergeant understood the situation and figured out that there was no justification for demanding the auditor's ID, as he had not witnessed any crime being committed. That's when the sergeant let him go without seeing any ID. The worst case scenario, if something were major, yeah, we would need as much as we could. Okay. I mean, uh, so just, just be careful with what, when you get into whatever you're doing. I know this is not the first time, it's going to be the last time. I don't know. I, I, I deal with this type of interaction all the time. I, I, this is not the type of interaction I, I would like to. Uh, you're not get being myself detained. involved. You're, you're, the only reason these guys. I know that they want to get my information, but I'm telling you I didn't see anything. And I'm not going to lie and say I saw something that I didn't see. That's just point blank and period. I told you what I saw. I saw them put a case in a brown bag and some clothes in a brown bag. That's it. I don't. I didn't see any narcotics. So you said Seth Philip. First name is Philip. It's been one of those days, man. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what's a good contact info for you? I, I got a business card in the car, and I can give you that. Let's walk across when I pull off this side of the road. Okay. All right. All right. Thank All you. Right, man. Be careful. Finally, watch as this corrupt top's attempts at intimidation backfire spectacularly. Okay. Okay, say that again? Uh, I lost the keys and the junkyard over there. Okay. So I called them to come and get the... To come open the gate or what? Huh? To come open the gate? No, the key. No, the car. The car is the one that lost the keys. I lost the keys to the car. Oh, like you went into the property and you dropped the keys? Yeah. The, I was in there doing you know, like regular junkyard stuff looking for my parts. Uh, yeah. When I was leaving is when I found out I didn't have my keys. They let me go in, look for them all over the 30 acres of cars they have. Okay. They didn't find them, so they just grabbed the tractor and moved it, moved the car outside so I could call them blocksmiths. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's weird, yeah, because we got a call with a gentleman with your description. That's why on the oh. property. Were you the only one on there? Yeah, he just got here. The person on the scene was identified as a law student, Mr. Joel Martinez, who had lost his car keys inside the junkyard and was waiting for a locksmith to unlock his car. Martinez was polite and respectful to the officer, but the conversation was about to take a swift turn. No, we had a description of your your description that you were walking around the property. Yeah, well, I was here and the car was closed, so I couldn't get okay. out. So let me understand, is this car yours? So at the moment, I just bought it. Brother. You already bought it? Yeah. Okay. You gonna? What's wrong with it? Besides the key, it, it just, starts. Yeah, it starts and everything. They just came in and picked up some spare parts. Oh, okay. Over. All right. Yeah, they just sent us out here because I'm, I'm wondering if the owners, because there's cameras on your brother. Oh yeah, yeah. So they uh, saw saw yeah, you what, walking they, around. Yeah, and they, and they also told me like they told me like oh the alarm is activated after five uh, automatically. Okay. So. But they closed the gate behind you or what? Yeah. They yeah okay. The, they just moved the car here and they closed the gate. Over. Okay. What's your last name, brother? Uh, Jim Martinez. I'm, I'm sorry? Uh, I don't want to give any, I didn't invite any information. I'll just give you my first name, Joel. <laughs> well, I need your info, man, because I'm talking to you, brother, because you're the person that they called on. So, Martinez, no, it, first name? Nah, it's chill. What's that? It's just, just, just like that. I'm not going to give my information right now. Being a law student himself, Mr. Martinez knew that a 911 call doesn't give enough basis for identification. Moreover, the officer had no reasonable, articulable suspicion to demand his ID. We don't even know exactly what the call was about, but the deputy insisted on getting his details. Okay, why not? Just. Just? Just. Okay. Now, now here, here's the thing, brother. I'm going to be honest with you, Mr. Martinez. Yeah. Now, me asking you for your information is nothing illegal. Oh, okay. it's not I'm, just, I'm just asking you because you're the person they called on. I, I need to find out who you are. And you're telling me one thing, so I got to call the property manager and ask them if they were the ones that allowed you on the property. Yeah, that's that's the investigation, so, so, right? Yeah, yeah. So I need your name, brother. Well, I gave you my last name, and you could just call the, the property man. And, yeah. and do you have an ID? I do. You mind if I see it? I do. Okay, why is that, brother? Because I don't, I don't want to be difficult, man. No, you know, I don't, I'm trying to be as, difficult as, as, either. as long as I'm cooperative with you, you're cooperative with me, man. Oh okay. well, yeah, well, this goes a lot smoother for both of us. Okay, Jim. Uh -huh. Well, we'll leave it like this, and we can call it you. I'll give you my last name, and that's about it. Because uh -huh. at the end of the day, I don't, I, I'm not legally provided to give you the full name. I'll just, just leave it at the last name, bro. Okay. Well, here's the thing, is brother. And I, I, I don't know, I, I don't know where you heard this from or what, but 
since I'm investigating what's going on in this property and you're the one that matches the description, yeah. I need to know who I'm talking to now. Mr. Martinez was right as he had no reason to give his ID to the deputy. However, the deputy who had limited knowledge of the law went ahead to threaten the law student. If you want to take this further, you want to complain, you want to whatever, it's up to you, bro. But see, look, I'm coming, I'm coming to you respectfully, bro. Man. Okay. Okay. Was it? Man, 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 man. So I'm just investigating what's going on, bro. Now, yeah. if you fail to ID yourself, I'm asking you lawfully to see who you are. You're the one making it difficult. Now, if you want to impair my 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 investigation, that's fine. That's on you. Okay. But I don't think you want to take it to that extent, brother. For giving me your name and date of birth. No, no, me la quiero dar, señor. No, tuya, yours, yours. ¿Qué pasa? No, you have any ID? Sí, 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 ID. Him? Oh, no. Okay. Okay. okay, so I'm gonna warn you now. I'm gonna okay. warn you now, brother. You don't give me your ID or your full name, I'm going to arrest you for failure to ID. Okay, okay. so. Because this is, I'm investigating, brother. That's all I'm doing. The deputy had no idea who he was up against as Martinez straight away took him to a law class. It's fine like that. Okay, I'll give you my, my name after, okay. after what I say this. Okay. All I need is your okay, name and no, date of birth, bro. That's it. Under I'm, the I'm not amendment? asking you. I'm not at, oh, and, no, and I'm okay. a law student here, too. So Perfect. It's not that I'm, not, I'm not asking you for a blood sample. I'm not asking for your hey, DNA. That's, All I'm asking. Not, that's a CSA identification. Uh -huh. Okay, correct. So I'm going to investigate. Calls, the, the, calls the, are not are not reasonable, articulable uh, suspicion okay. to suspect me of a crime. You know under Florida versus J.L. Okay. under the Supreme Court. Perfect, but I'm not here to argue with you. Yeah, I'm not here to argue. I'm here to defend my rights. So I'm asking you for your name and Okay, that has nothing to do with me because I don't it know you. It doesn't. It doesn't. I don't, know, I don't you. know you either, officer. Okay. I thought Look, you were a, there, I thought you were a chill officer when you got down no, like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm my hands, crazy. whatever. I'm They're cool. like, hey, okay, he'll respect I'm my cool. rights. I'll just be on my last but, but name. But you're the one making this difficult. difficult. All I'm asking for is your name. It's right? really not difficult. And yeah. it's not impeding your investigation because it's not a physical or okay. it doesn't, well, or it, it doesn't, okay. my, giving you my ID doesn't you say, you help you're, 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 you're a law student? Okay. Yes, sir. So you got to understand, sir, I'm investigating. Okay. Even when faced with arrest, Martinez didn't surrender and kept fighting for his rights. The clueless deputy won't take no for an answer and keeps on escalating the dire situation. Well, but yeah, now, now, to, uh, now you're making it bigger than it is because all I'm asking is for a name and date of birth. You don't want to give me your ID? Just no. give me your name and date of birth, and that's it. Unfortunately, the state takes you. Yeah, dude, you, you have to identify yourself, man. Uh, Are you right, making Texas? Texas, you're, Texas you're, is okay, more. Brother, you're, you're, like you said, all you got to do is your name and You're, you're making this bigger than it is, brother. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so no. we go on our way, man. All I have is Martinez. You're giving that's, me your first name like like a normal okay. person would. Okay, my like name a, is not going to help you in your investigation, first yeah. of all. Well, yeah, but I made contact with you, dude. That's the only thing. Contact is not enough reasonable suspicion for you to seize my identification. You're not being placed on arrest or anything, brother. Okay. That's okay, are you asking for my name? I'm asking for your full okay, name, Okay, if you ask me for my name, I, I I exercise my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. If you're demanding my ID, I, that's, I a, that's said, a fourth ID. Uh, I'm not fourth demanding. Amendment. I did never demand. So you can ask? All I said is give it to me, okay? Ask? Now, here's the problem. Once again, Martinez was spot on. The deputy was violating his Fourth Amendment rights as he had no reason to get his ID. However, just in a matter of seconds, the officer did the unthinkable. I got all night. No, you know what? You don't need a supervisor because what's going to happen is, dude, I'm going to place you under arrest for failure of ID. Okay? And that's going to be on you, okay. not me, bro. So you already okay. said that it's going to okay. be under arrest? Yes. I will go ahead, be under go arrest if I don't give go my ID. Go into the brother. Go into the so I'll give go you my dear. Go, go into the No, no, no. Put your hands on the car. You already failed to identify yourself. Okay. Give me your left. Give me your right arm. You got. To, you want to play games, brother? I'm. I'm here being nice. And you don't want to give me your name and date of birth. And then all this just for a car, bro. That's it. Okay. Bueno pues. Ahí estamos. I'm gonna read your Miranda. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it says he just purchased it. All right. Come on, brother. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. The brave student didn't resist when he was being arrested because he knew that the decision would be overturned pretty soon. However, apart from violating his Fourth Amendment rights, the officers also went on to illegally search his vehicle. That was in his wallet? Yeah. Well, thank God you wrote that, dude. <laughs> No, they, there's no keys. Supposedly, he, he was telling me that he lost them inside. He just bought this car from inside. That's what he told me. There's a couple of grinders, but there's nothing illegal no. right now. He's saying he just bought this car inside the lot. And uh, he was in there looking for it's, parts, and he dropped the keys in there. So he's waiting. he yeah. was waiting for a locksmith to start the car. So um, I need to call the owner to see 
if, it, if it's true. It seems like the cops have a habit of demanding IDs for no reason, as they went on to even get the ID of the locksmith who had reached there. The poor man showed no resistance and showed his ID out of fear. The deputies didn't find anything illegal in his car, and moments later, he was taken to the detention center and locked in. However, a supervisor arrived on the spot and immediately realized that Martinez was unlawfully arrested and proceeded to release him. The supervisor stayed and calmly listened to what Martinez had to say about the arrest earlier. I could get that on the phone and be like, okay, that's enough. Show it to my attorney, that's enough for the litigation. And, and he said, and I told him that if you're telling me to, if you're threatening me with arrest, and I have it all on video, he said, if you're threatening me with arrest, I, I'll give you my, I, my wallet, right, I'll give you my ID right now. Like, no, turn around, push me into the car, boom, put your phone down, set it up on the windshield, put your phone down, grab me, tie me up, be like, you're a really stupid law student, aren't you? And like, okay, let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, takes me into the thing, right, and I'm telling him, like, bro, you're gonna sponsor my new car? I'm telling you, you're gonna sponsor my new car? Ho, 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 he thinks it's funny, he thinks he's a good law student, whatever, he leaves. Doesn't, and I asked him to, and I asked the other, do I get my phone call? No, that's up to the, the discretion of the arresting officers. How can we fix it? Okay, the deputy made a mistake. That's gonna be addressed, of course. Well, where's the deputy? You said he was gonna be here. Please. He's here, but I wanna meet with you first. Okay. Well, I give you my side. I would like to hear the deputy side right here. Okay. If that's fine. It was time the corrupt deputy was held accountable for his illegal arrest, and Martinez made sure of that. Have anything to say to me? No. You said you, you laughed at me? You said that I was a dumb boss today? Did I do it? Did you or did you not? Did I not? Did you say that I was a dumb boss today? No, I didn't say where you learned the boss, sir. I didn't know. No, 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 sir. You got me into the cruiser? Uh -huh. It's on your body cam, too? Uh -huh. It's on my phone, too. Uh -huh. You got, you got, got into the cruiser, and you said, like, you're a really dumb boss. When we were getting down here, you said to you, you're a really dumb boss, aren't you? You get, me, you get me into the thing, and you start making fun. Oh, everybody, look at him. He's a law student. He's a law student. You left me in there with the cuffs on it. Okay. And, and I told you, didn't I tell you that what you were doing was unlawful? Uh -huh. Like many officers, the deputy initially refused to admit his mistake, but ultimately, he had no option but to acknowledge the truth. No, no, you didn't. It's not your body camera. camera. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't disrespect my supervisor like that, man. Well, you, because you I, are. We, were, we were in the motions, and, and you know, and I'm in the wrong. I really am. I'm not gonna lie to you, but okay. You so, are in the wrong, and I told you you were in the wrong, and I told you you were gonna, and I told you all this, and what you thought was funny. I never thought it was funny. No, man. you laughed. You what walked was, in, trying to make funny, everyone laugh. Funny were your comments, bro. That's it. What were my comments? Your comments that you're saying, uh, Florida told this. I'm gonna get a new money. Florida, there. Florida, there's a jail. That's case law. You know my business? I can tell. Because you unlawfully arrested me. It wasn't a mistake. He broke the law. It's not a mistake. And that's what we're here. That's, that's yeah, what we're, that's, that's what we're here. And now, you are going to buy me a new mistake. You are. Because now, all this, that's going to get for you that request. Your dash cam in your car, everything. My phone, your badge numbers, everything's going to come into one single file record. It's going to come in here tomorrow. Martinez was absolutely owning the deputy who could do nothing but hide his face in shame. Moments later, the supervisor had to intervene to call him off. And how do you think? And you lost your qualified immunity right now. Right now, okay, you're yourself. So, so it's getting out of control. control. Um, you said something different to me before? 
take off, I will take the complete form. Oh, whoa. Uh, you have the complete form? I can fill up? No, I have to fill up myself. Is there anything else besides what you told me at first that has changed? Or anything, anything else that we have to add to your complete? No, that's fine. I'll okay. see you in court. Have a nice day. Uh, so are you going to take you to your car as far as the last meeting? Well, I'm actually going to pick up your depending on how it goes. But okay. can I just contact me for email? Okay, I'll leave uh, in terms of first one. Okay, thank Any you. Any other questions before I leave? Uh, not it. Thank you for your question list. Hi, sir. Sounds good. Just like that, the deputy was dismissed, and Martinez also went away on his own. He did claim to take legal action against the deputies, but until now, there have been no updates regarding any lawsuits. However, we do expect the courageous law student to take these corrupt officers to the cleaners. And this is not the last time police officers blatantly violated citizens' rights. Yeah, but you don't need to be, you don't need to be flapping your gums at us. I got you. I live here, I got you, I'm gonna speak to him. No, now, he's, now you're under arrest. Now you're under arrest. On May 15th, 2023, a Logan Township police officer pulled over a man just outside his workplace for an obstructed tag. Shortly, she approached the driver. Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm officer coming to Logan Township Police Department. Do you have a license registration insurance? Uh, my, my license number, I thought I broke my license. Okay. But I was and I got my license That's no problem. What did I get stopped for? Uh, so that plate cover on the back? So you can't have a tinted plate cover. The frame is fine, but the plate, it makes it difficult for the plate to see, so that is not allowed. All right, do you have that number for me? Yeah, 1877. Okay. 129. Uh-huh. Uh, that's it. All right, that's it? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to get you my registration. Okay. All righty. In the area for work? What kind of vehicle do you have? I'm not getting any. Oh, here? Yeah, that's why I was, I just go out and go to the store, come back and the driver obliged what the officer demanded. However, moments later, the guy's co-worker, who was standing some feet apart from the traffic stop, started to yell at the female officer. It's a white Ford sedan. Hello? I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. Yeah, I understand that, that's fine, but I'm gonna stop. If you could just go back over there, please. Twenty-five cars, but somebody else slide out here. Thirty copies. I'm going to go down aisle now. You know who this guy is? Yeah, I know who he is. What's his name? Uh, oh, you gotta ask some point. You don't know his name? I can't. I mean, I. I, I, I there you are. Yeah, some dude just walked up to my shop and told me that he's going to uh, beat me up. Thirty-five cars. The female officer later claimed that the co-worker said, I'm gonna Instead of ignoring his statement and moving on with the traffic stop, the officer proceeded to call back up, claiming that she was in danger. Yeah, it's a black male. He works at Lineage. He's about 35, red pants, navy blue hoodie, orange traffic vest. Yeah, I'll check on this, and uh, when I come back, if you have your insurance, no problem. Thank you. Sir, you need to go back inside. Yeah, you need to go back inside. Let's go. I want to stop. Well, technically, the co-worker was not interfering with the police stop and was at a safe distance away. Whatever he said qualifies under the First Amendment right of freedom of speech. You guys are good. Good morning. I'm sorry, could you go back over there? I want to stop. It'll be two seconds. No, I just came, I'm the supervisor here. I just came to see. He works here. That's why yeah, I, I understand. I'll, and I'll be I'm clear with him in two seconds. Problems, and then I'm just asking you, is, is, is everything Yeah, right? everything's fine, right, and right. I'll be clear in two seconds. Right. Can I ask you what he stopped for? Yeah, he was stopped for the plate cover. That's it. Already? So I want to ask you. Please, All right. You know, I don't have a problem. Moments later, backup arrived, and patrolman Kalishan came and confronted the individual, and within seconds, escalated the entire situation. No, my name I'm Mark. I'm on the school about that. I just came to check on my employee. That's it. Yeah, that's be, first she off, explain. No, first, she yeah, explain. first off, man, I did walk up. And no, I didn't walk. She wasn't talking about me. Okay. She called. Yeah, what's and what's what's your deal, man? 
You don't stop. You, yeah, yeah, but you don't need to be. You don't need to be flapping your gums at us. I got you. I live here. I got you. I'm gonna speak to him. No, now, now, he's, now you're under arrest. Now you're under arrest. Now, now you're under arrest. Turn around. Turn around. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Turn around. Turn around. Don't resist, bro. Bro, they getting my feet up. I ain't used Law enforcement officers need to have thicker skin and must not let mere words affect them. However, this officer immediately went over to arrest him and kept making the situation worse. Hey, calm down, bro. What? Calm down, bro. I'm at work. Get out of here. Put your Stop hands behind your head. Listen, listen to me, bro. Bro, listen to me. Going to break my arm. Listen to me, bro. Listen to me. Put this hand behind your back. Stop. Stop. Listen to me, bro. Yo, bud, relax. Relax, bro. I'm not doing this, bro. Relax, you too. Back up, bro. Are you going to put him as tight as you can? I'm not like going to. Let me explain to you, sir. You're under arrest for disorderly what, conduct. What's your problem with that? arresting me at work, bro? I didn't do I ain't break no rules. No law. Get off me. So I'm putting my arm. Get my boss, yo. Just watch her back. Get guy. my f***ing boss, bro. The officers were clearly escalating the situation, but the co-worker was also not making matters easy for himself, as he continued to resist the officers. What's your name? I'll give you my name, bro. You came up on me. So I asked you why you were flapping your gums at us, and your because response to me, you your response to me was suck my d**k. Okay, you talking about why I'm flapping right my gums. So now you're I'm under arrest. I'm checking with my co Well, now you're under arrest. Bro, you using the words you had to use in front of everybody. I want to talk to my boss. No. Nope. Bro, you want to kill me. No. I want to talk to my boss. It's good. Oh. Yo, yo, relax. Yo, yo, bro. yo, yo. It's not worth it, man. It's not bro, worth it. I'm trying to it's relax. Not worth it. My phone not even on me. It's That's not what I'm worth to tell you. Relax. <sighs> relax, bud. <sighs> Alright. Hey, let me go. Hey, well. Pat, what, what Pat, they arrested me for nothing, Pat. Let's just put him in here. You know I just lost my daughter, bro. They arrested me Can for nothing. Me Can you calm down? This isn't going to get you any better. Take that anger down tonight. Have a seat. Right, please. All right? I did 11 years on parole. They keep doing this to me. This year. They ain't going to solve anything. They ain't going to do any job. They ain't going Soon after he was arrested, his employer came out and the officer started to explain why he made the arrest. Once again, it appeared as if the cop had no clue about the freedom of speech. Yeah, so his response to me, when I asked why he's flapping his gums to me while I was talking to the security officer was, suck my dick. <laughs> now he's under arrest for disorderly. You're not gonna use that language. You got employees out over there. I was speaking with him as well. I'm not having that. So, I want to you, bro. He's going to that like, he's not going to jail or nothing. Correct. Actually, well, he might. He might be he down might. because of. We got terroristic threats on our yeah. officer too. We got terroristic oh, threats. Oh, uh, resisting arrest. Oh, uh, we have it. So, we have it. Nobody. And he just walked away. It's be a different story. I was talking with your security guard. He was very pol he was very polite and respectful. He advised me that he spoke with her already. Understood what was going on. You know, obviously, we're on a car stop. Don't walk up on us because it makes us nervous. And now he's walking up to on her. The officers then conspired together to decide what charges they should be brought in against the poor guy. So that was off when it fell, but everyone's cameras, everyone's cameras were falling off. Minimum disorderly conduct, terroristic threats, and resisting. Resisting. Got obstruction. She came to the car stop to watch. Did he call his parole officer also? Did he still own parole? If he's still on parole, yes. If he's not, he said he did 15 years on, so I'm assuming he's off parole now. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. These stories prove that corrupt cops aren't invincible. When they overstep their bounds, it's often the courage and persistence of ordinary citizens that bring them to justice. Whether it's through a camera, a courtroom, or simply standing their ground, people have shown time and again that they won't back down in the face of corruption. If you agree with me, please consider showing your support by liking this video and also make sure to subscribe to stay informed about future cases like these. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the next video here.